Hi there. My name is Jan and I'm a field application scientist at Redshift Bio, where we provide structural characterization of biomolecules and especially proteins. In this video, I would like to talk about this protein, or actually about this protein. These two look very similar, right? And in fact, they are. Their sequences differ only by four amino acids. Although they are almost ident identical in composition, one of them is an active enzyme with a catalytic site shown here. The other one is its inactive precursor. Actually, the two proteins we're looking at here are two forms of a protease produced in our body, namely alpha chymotrypsin and chymotrypsinogen. So again, what we know is that in the human body, alpha chymotrypsin is an active enzyme, whereas chymotrypsinogen is inactive. The crystal structures suggest that there are also subtle conformational differences between them. But do we see structural differences in a real buffer environment? And how does it relate to the protein activity? These are the questions that are going to be answered in this video. So first of all, are there structural differences in solution? And if so, can we use these structural changes as a reporter for protein activity? And finally, if we can answer both of those questions, where else can we use structure to track protein activity? So let's put it to the test. First, we put both of those proteins into a buffer solution, and then we use microfluidic modulation spectroscopy for doing high precision structural characterization. The details of this work are published in our recent application note with the title how secondary structure relates to enzyme activity, the structural differences between alpha chymotrypsin and its inactive precursor chymotrypsinogen determined with microfluidic modulation spectroscopy. But first of all, let me give you a brief introduction on the activation pathway of chymotrypsin. The inactive precursor molecule chymotrypsinogen consisting of 245 residues is produced in the pancreas. Initiated by the presence of trypsin, two dipeptides are cut out of this protein, which gives rise to formation of the active form that consists of three chains connected by disulfide bonds. The residues 57, 102 and 195 form the active center, the so-called catalytic triad. The residues forming the active site are well separated on the protein sequence, but are very close in space in its higher order structure. This highlights that the slightest overall structural change can have a substantial impact on the arrangement of the catalytic triad and the activity of the enzyme. Therefore, precise evaluation of the protein higher order structure is critical to ensure protein function in general. With microfluidic modulation spectroscopy, we have the ideal tool for running automated structural analysis of proteins. MMS is a transmission infrared technique that provides high sensitivity for structural change, employing quantum cascade laser technology. By probing the vibrational response of carbonyl groups, this is a non-invasive and label-free method. The spectral information given by the so-called Mi1 band reports on the H-bonding environment and the torsion of the protein backbone. Therefore, this is a direct measure of both intra- and intermolecular changes. In this study, we have analyzed the inactive chymotrypsinogen and the active alpha chymotrypsin, each dissolved in PBS. To highlight the spectral features, I'm going to present the inverted second derivative spectra. Roughly speaking, there are three main features in the spectrum of the inactive version, showing up in the beta sheet, the unordered, and the turn region. Overlaying the spectrum of the active enzyme, shown here in red, reveals subtle spectral differences in all of those regions. By doing an area of overlap analysis, we find that the overall spectral difference between the inactive and the active form amounts to about 10%. Next, we decompose this observation into absolute changes in the higher order structure. From Gaussian deconvolution integrated into the MMS software package, 
we can determine the absolute higher order structure of the two proteins. For a chymotrypsinogen, we find the highest abundance of better sheet and turn structure, with lower contributions from unordered and helical structure. Upon enzyme activation, better sheet unordered and helical contributions decrease, where we find an increase in turn structure. So now we come back to the three questions from the beginning of this video. First of all, what are the structural differences between the inactive and active enzyme in the real buffer solution? We found that upon activation, there are subtle but significant changes of one to up to 6% in the contributions from individual structural motifs. As reflected by about 10% in the overall spectrum, this example highlights that MMS is the ideal tool to determine such small structural changes. Now, there is a small change in the global structure related to the enzyme activity, which is mainly determined by the arrangement of only three residues. In this example, we have demonstrated that it does. And it does make a lot of sense. Remember, the catalytic triad was well separated on the protein sequence but primarily the higher order structure determines which residues are close in space and how they interact. Here, for example, we saw a slight decrease in rigid structure along activation, which may provide the flexibility needed for the enzyme to work. In other words, we can turn this around and use structure as a reporter for discriminating between functioning and non-functioning proteins in general. So for which type of biopharmaceutical applications can this be used? For protein-based drugs, the higher order structure can be used as an early red flag to report on variations from the production norm, providing you real-time access to the drug quality. Especially for biologics, it is key to assess the structure-function relationship. But even more so for biosimilars, as a lot of effort goes into proving that the similar has the same function yet no additional side effects compared to the originator. And of course, the drug stability, improved through formulation screening, which can easily be supported by tracking structure with our automated MMS technology, effectively simplifying the decision-making process. With this, I would like to finish today. Thank you for your attention, and please check out our website for more publications, information on MMS, and our products.